Good morning, everyone. Uh, so before I start my talk, I have a couple of questions. So how many of you have ever heard of this term soil cation balancing? Okay, did any one of you do any kind of research on it? Or if, if there are farmers, are you guys following this particular uh, concept? Wow, it's interesting. <laughs> so the soil cation balancing, it's it's very popular in farm uh, uh, in farmers' point of view, but scientists do not recommend it. And what is soil cation balancing? Right. So, well, so it's a practice of application of different kinds of amendments to change the base saturations or uh, the saturations of base cations on the soil exchange sites, right? And a soil with such an optimal or a balanced saturation ratio is considered to be a balanced soil. And, wow, well, this is very, so why is this topic very contentious? Like there is a lot of debate going on why people should follow soil balancing or people shouldn't follow soil balancing concept. Because over a period of time, research has shown that soil balancing doesn't work. Soil balancing, or in other words, I'm gonna use like balancing and BCSR. Uh, they both are like synonyms. Uh, most of the research scientists, they do not recommend it because all the past research, it shows that it's not gonna work, it's not gonna improve any copies. But farmers think the other way. Why do they think? That's a big question mark. They think uh, farmers, crop consultants, believe that soil balancing actually works. It helps in improving, in improving uh, crop yields. And so, where does this enthusiasm come from? So these people, they think that soil balancing will overall enhance the soil health, and that leads to additional benefits of, uh, with respect to soils, crops, and more importantly, weed control. And these questions, like how soil balancing improves the soil health and how they in turn improve these particular aspects is a very big question that needs to be answered. And this particular soil balancing concept is more popular with organic farmers. And organic farmers, they have very limited options in managing their crops, right? Especially with respect to weeds, they either have mechanical or biological control, and they think that soil balancing will help, will help them controlling weeds. So many farmers, like I said, especially organic farmers, they contend that correcting soil imbalances will, uh, will improve crop growth, most importantly, ease their weed problems and increase crop yield and quality and therefore increase overall farm profitability. So there was like recently a survey conducted and we, they found some interesting aspects. So what they found is like more than 50% of farmers in Ohio and Indiana, they believe that weeds are some kind of indicators of soil imbalances. And if these imbalances are corrected, they think that they'll get rid of these uh, weed problems. And in another survey, like 60% of organic farmers in Ohio and Indiana, and about 30% of farmers in New England, and about a small number in California, and there are some other states where farmers are like really interested in following this particular approach by manipulating the base saturations. So there is like really interest in the farmers in following this concept. So what actually is base saturation? Can anyone answer that? What really is base saturation? Okay, so base saturation, uh, before going to that, I want to show like we recently conducted uh, 
like this is this uh, research uh, survey was conducted like two weeks back uh, by me and Dr. Kalman, and we sent out a survey like having 12 questions of uh, we wanted to get a pulse of soil fertility specialists if they're like what's going on with this uh, uh, the soil cation balancing and research on this particular topic. So we we asked this question like the first question is have you ever conducted any research on soil uh, calcium to magnesium ratios and you can see here out of 50 respondents 90 percent of them said they did not do any kind of research or they don't know about the soil cation balancing only five people said yes they did some kind of research so we asked like uh, several opinionated statements and we, we wanted to see how many of them agree or how many of them disagree with, with those statements. So we asked, there is no scientific merit to this approach and this has been shown repeatedly. And you can see here, 78% people said they strongly agree or I mean, they agree or strongly agreed with that particular statement. And you can see, none of them disagreed with that statement. So scientific community is kind of like very strongly opinionated that BCSR or soil balancing doesn't work. And the next question there has, there, I have not seen any evidence to either endorse or discredit this approach. 34% people said they agree with that statement and 56% uh, people said they don't agree with that statement. And the most important, is it possible that farmers do see benefits from this approach? And you can see like 2% people strongly agree with that statement. And 20% said somewhat agree, and an overwhelming 56% people said they don't agree with that statement. So scientists believe farmers are not gonna see any response for soil uh, if you balance your soils. And we asked the final question, if there should be any scientific research further on this particular topic, and they said, and 34% somewhat agree. So they don't agree, but they have some kind of interest in doing research. So coming to what, what is base saturation? Wow. So what is base saturation? Base satur you have these, uh, you have a soil, right? And it has these clay particles which have negative charges on these clay particles. And those attract, obviously negative attracts pastures. So they, though, those attract all these different kinds of uh, cations. And we call that as the cation exchange capacity of the soil. And base, there are like two basic categories of cations. The basic cations, which are calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium, and acidic cations uh, like hydrogen and aluminum. So the base saturation is the proportion of these basic cations on the cation exchange sites. So it's the proportion of these uh, uh, calcium, magnesium, sodium, or potassium on these exchange sites, that's the base saturation. So for example, if I say 65% calcium saturation, 65% of these exchange sites are occupied by calcium. 20% magnesium, 20% of these exchange sites are occupied by magnesium. So that's base saturation. And the total base saturation is can be calculated by adding the individual saturation percentages of these base cations over the total CEC. That gives you the percent base saturation. So what's the relation between soil pH and base saturation, right? And it's always a one-to-one -one relation, like a straight line relationship. As the pH is increasing, uh, your base saturation is increased. So if you have a pH of seven, you can see the base saturation would be like about 80%. And as, the pH, as at lower pHs, obviously pH is determined by H plus, right? So you have a lot of H plus saturation at lower pHs. So let's go into like history of this BCSR. So the BCSR theory states that there should be an optimum ratio. Uh, there should be an ideal ratio of these cations, the base cations like calcium, magnesium, and potassium in order to derive an optimal plant growth. And without that optimal saturation ratio, there could be a potential to yield decreases. 
So this was developed as part of uh, fertilizer recommendations. You have this uh, more traditionally and widely followed build up and maintenance approaches like for example, if you see a sufficiency level, there's a critical level above which or below you, if you get a soil test report which is below that level, you add fertilizer. And if you get a uh, response which is above the critical level, you don't add a fertilizer. So those are pretty straightforward approaches in fertilizer recommendations. And basic cation saturation, it mainly deals with the saturation levels of your soil, right? And it only corrects the mineral imbalances. It doesn't see if crop is uh, getting adequate amount of nutrients or not. It's just trying to uh, balance that saturation ratios and it only deals with uh it's, it only deals with calcium, magnesium, and potassium, whereas these approaches, they're like overall like uh, general uh, plant nutrients, NPK, macro and um, micronutrients. So this idea was the BCSR concept, or this idea of base saturation was con first conceptualized in early 1900s. Leo and May were working at, um, I think, uh, New Jersey Experimental Station. The, in 1901, they proposed that uh, 5 to 4 calcium magnesium ratio has to be maintained in order to see optimal growth uh, for plants. And in early 1930s and in the early 1940s, it really gained momentum. Like researchers started to look into this uh, particular aspect and they started to do more uh, kind of experiments uh, to evaluate this theory. And so how many of you have heard of William Albrecht? Okay, so William Albrecht, he's, he's considered as a pioneer in promoting this uh, uh, base saturation concept. And these are, uh, he's from University of Missouri. He was conducting like uh, multiple greenhouse experiments on uh, legumes and he was testing uh, calcium saturation, how calcium saturation affects uh, root nodule formation and nitrogen fixation. So in that process, he, uh, he did a lot of study on uh, base cation saturation ratios. There are these other people like Bear, Hunter, Brain, Stop. These are from uh, uh, New Jersey Experimental Stations, and they also conducted some research on this particular aspect. So it was like really Albrecht who promoted this concept of a balanced soil, and he said that a balanced soil should have at least 65% uh, calcium and 15% magnesium. So that those were his numbers uh, by doing experiments on legumes. And Bear and co-workers in New Jersey in 1914, they proposed a different concept, like instead of a balanced soil, they proposed that there should be an ideal ratio on the base of, of these base cations on exchange complex to maximize the crop yields. Right? Um, so there were some flaws in Will William Albert's studies, right? He's, he was trying to uh, increase the calcium saturation and he didn't see that adding, and he was adding lime to those, uh, to his soils, and he thought that increasing calcium saturation is actually increasing the yield. But in fact, what's happening was he was changing the pH of those soils. And the pH, the change in pH has increased the yields, and that was like a major flaw in, in all his studies. But anyways, he proposed this balanced soil, and Bayer proposed this ideal saturation concept. So later, instead of having one specific ratio, like five to four or six to one or whatever, instead of having one specific ratio, Graham and Albrecht, again, after reviewing his own work and, his, and uh, the, the work from, uh, from others, he, they proposed these ideal ranges. Instead of having one specific ratio, they proposed these ranges, and they, they said that if you have a soil which has a calcium saturation within this range, you can consider that as a balanced soil. So this table gives you the saturation percentages, what they proposed. Initially, Albrecht said like 65 for calcium and magnesium 15%. Bayer said 65 and magnesium 10%, uh, potassium 5%. So the corresponding ideal ratio according to Bayer is 6.5 to 1 for calcium and magnesium. 
13 is to 1 for calcium to potassium, 2 is to 1 for magnesium to potassium. And Graham said the range could be anywhere between 65 and 85 for calcium, 6 to 12 for magnesium, and 2 to 5 for potassium. So these are the corresponding ratios uh, that a soil could have for, uh, to be considered as a balanced soil. And Albrecht finally said 60 to 75 for calcium, 10 to 20 for magnesium, and 2 to 5 for potassium. So if you have a soil and have a base saturation within these ranges, it's considered as balanced soil according to these uh, authors. So later on, people started uh, doing research. Uh, they wanted to really validate this theory. Is there like really a saturation, a particular saturation ratio or an ideal saturation ratio where you can have like higher crop yields? And so that was a research question and, sorry. So these were some of the studies conducted. Uh, they were like both greenhouse and uh, field experiments that were conducted to validate this theory. And the, the point, I, one point I want to highlight here is like there are like very limited number of studies here. You can see field and greenhouse studies. There are like a few more studies, but overall there are like limited number of uh, studies validating this theory. And I, the highlighted uh, studies are connected by people who are like, who work in Ohio State University and they actually did work here to validate this base saturation concept. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, McLean et al. Uh, these people, this uh, McLean, uh, this guy conducted like a very comprehensive research study. He tried to uh, uh, compare the uh, concept of BCSR with the standard philosophies, and he, he was he was testing the effect of BCSR on crop yields. He did a, like a very comprehensive study, like a six-year crop rotation study. So he did some field experiments on corn, soybean, wheat, alfalfa growth at different saturation ratios. So the ratios for calcium and magnesium range between 2.4 to 26.8, and magnesium to potassium range between 0.6 to 3.6. So those are like very wide uh, range of ratios. And this one shows, uh, this graph is being reproduced from his data. So this is the calcium and magnesium ratio here, yield bushels per acre for corn and soybean. And this green line indicates the, the ideal ratio. According to Bayer, the ideal ratio is 6.5 to 1, right? So what you would expect is if that concept is working, you would see very high yields at this, along this line. But you see like, Above or below that ratio, you still see there are like comparable yields. There, the yields were not statistically significant uh, across a wide range of ratios. You can see here there's a very low yield for corn and there's very high yield for corn. The low yields and high yields, they fall within that range. Uh, so the yields were very comparable. So he, he, uh, these people, these researchers, they uh, concluded that there is no specific ratio, and as long as you provide sufficient amount of nutrients to the plants, you don't have to worry about this maintaining this ratio. So that's what their conclusion was. And more recently, Stevens from University of uh, Missouri, they did some research on cotton yield and fiber quality uh, using these calcium and magnesium ratios. So they used gypsum and Epsom salt to manipulate the ratios. and uh, Calcium and magnesium ratios range from 2.5 to 7.6. So what they found is, again, they didn't see any significant effect either on crop quality or on crop yield. So what are the overarching conclusions? Like, what did these people prove uh, about BCSR and crop yields? There is no ideal ratio where crop yields are maximum. Yields are comparable across a wide range of ratios. And there is absolutely no relationship between following this concept and increasing the yields. And it can result in excessive fertilizer applications when you're trying to maintain base saturations. For example, if you have a soil which has nutrients that meets all the crop nutrient, all the crop demands, but in order to but that ratio, but those nutrients are not sufficient to have that ideal ratio on the extreme sites, right? So you keep on adding the fertilizer to increase that saturation ratio to 
uh, to bring it to an ideal ratio when, when there is not when there is no need to apply the assortment. So you're increasing the fertilizer applications and ultimately you're increasing the cost. And he, they, most people concluded that the build-up or sufficiency level approach is far superior and is more economical than BCSR. And maintaining sufficient levels to meet crop demands, that's more important rather than trying to achieve a base saturation ratio. And promoting BCSR could result in inefficient uses of uh, resource use in agriculture. So these were the very important conclusions that these researchers derived from conducting research on BCSR and crop yields. So these, these are the tri-state fertilizer recommendations commonly followed in Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan. That it, say, it states that most plants grow well over a wide range of ratios. If you have an exchangeable calcium, which is over 200 ppm, you're not gonna see any response uh, uh, from plants. Minimum exchangeable magnesium should be at least 50, 50 ppm. If you have a soil which has a calcium to magnesium ratio less than one to one, apply lime, which is high in calcium. And if you see any magnesium deficiencies in the soil or in the crop, add magnesium, um, uh, add lime which is high in magnesium. Oops. So what is the need for research? Like I have shown you like these, research, uh, these studies which showed that there's absolutely no relationship between uh, uh, BCSR concept and yield and maximizing yields, right? So what is the need? So we scientists believe that uh, the research results, what we what we see from our research results, but farmers are thinking the other way. They think that cadan balancing is actually working for them. So there's a wide gap between uh, farmer perception and our scientist perception. So we need to be bridge that gap, right? And they think that soil balances enhances soil health. How does changing saturation ratios will change the uh, Will will improve the crop yields. Will will improve the uh, weed uh, weed problems. How does uh, just changing one single ratio uh, has benefit, uh, has these multiple benefits? These are like some unresolved questions that we need to answer, right? And. Most of the agriculture scientists, uh, they do not know what the soil balancing concept is. And to be honest with you, I didn't know what soil balancing is before I came to Ohio State. So I wanted to show you like, so I wanted to show again this uh, research survey thing. Like 90% 90, 90 people said they didn't do any research. And I'm, sh I'm sure that most of the people there have never heard of soil current balancing. <laughs> So there is this disconnect between farmer perception and uh, uh, scientist perception regarding this city, and we need to answer the answer or bridge that gap. So we are conducting this uh, multidisciplinary research project at Ohio State University, and we are testing the influence of BCSR on crop yield and quality and all the soil health parameters, mostly physical, chemical, and biological parameters. And importantly, some of the wheat scientists, they're looking how this soil balancing can improve wheat problems, I mean, can correct wheat problems, and the overall farm profitability. So we are doing on-station research trials. We are including farmers in our research, so we are doing some on-farm field trials. We are also doing greenhouse studies to specifically study to specifically look into some aspects of soil health. So on-station trials, we have four four field sites. We are using different soil amendments to either increase or decrease that calcium and magnesium ratio, like lime, dolomitic lime, gypsum, Epsom salts, and we are testing that on crops, on like field crops, corn, soybean, and small grain crops. We are also testing that on vegetable crops, like uh, squash, popcorn, and edamame. And on-farm trials, we are conducting research on BCSR in about 20 farmer fields. Uh, we applied gypsum and other micro other amendments. We, we are testing again on yields, uh, improvements in crop, crop quality, and farm profitability. 
So we are doing this uh, one uh, greenhouse study. The objective of this is how does changing magnesium, uh, calcium to magnesium ratios affect the aggregate stability of the soil? And you know, like soil physical structure is very, very important, right? For it's, it's a starting point. So how does changing ratios affect this aggregation stability? We know, in addition to cal uh, serving as nutrients, calcium and magnesium, they play a very major role, very major role in aggregation, right? And this, there was one study uh, by Donsova and Norton. He, uh, they reported that magnesium saturations well above 80% could actually deteriorate the soil structure. It can break, it can cause soil aggregate breakdown and reduce water infiltration, increase soil loss or soil erosion. But how realistic is 80% magnesium saturation? Have any of you seen a soil with 80% magnesium? No, right? So the true field conditions, uh, I saw the maximum mag magnesium saturation is like 25 to 30 percent. But that that could have a drastic effect if, depending on the CEC of the soil. If if you have a high CEC soil and if you have like make saturations close to 30 percent, that can have a specific effect in changing uh, the in causing the soil dispersion. So we are trying to look into these things through these greenhouse studies, and this is. Uh, just a small graph from this study showing how magnesium saturation could cause like reduced infiltration because of breakdown in structure. So I just want to go over gypsum because we talk more about gypsum and we are using the gypsum as an amendment in our study. So what are the benefits of using gypsum? And the first and foremost is gypsum doesn't change pH, unlike lime. It's a neutral soil, so it's not going to change the pH of the soil. It's a readily available calcium source. If you're really interested in changing saturations, it's a readily available calcium source. It's a nutrient source for calcium and sulfur. And most, most importantly, it improves the soil structure and it leads to increased permeability, more water infiltration, and it, decrease, it helps in decreasing the offsite transport of phosphorus. And this, Kevin King, they conducted a, a field study in 2016 and they applied like one ton per hectare of gypsum for two years. And after two years, they found that the total dissolved reactive phosphorus and the total phosphorus loads were almost reduced by 35 and 40 percent. So gypsum uh, is a very good uh, amendment to reduce uh, phosphorus offset transport and because it opens up the soil, calcium can penetrate into deeper layers and it can nullify this aluminum toxicity there and it prevents soil crusting. Obviously that reduces soil uh, excessive runoff and erosion and it allows roots to grow into deeper depths.